The Steam Deck finally has a set release date of February 28th, because saying shipping in March would have been a travesty. But if you're like me who got into the queue an hour late in July, you're not getting one until Q2. So what are we gonna do till then? Speculate, because that's what we do here on the internet. So here we have my laptop. It's an Asus Zephyrus G14 from 2020 with the 4900HS and the 2060 Max-Q. So eight cores, 16 thread, dedicated graphics. And currently it is the closest thing that I have to a Steam Deck. And if you're wondering why there's a hole punched in the bottom of it, it's to allow me to hook an external GPU up to it. Don't worry, I still have the original bottom cover. Now the reason I'm calling it an APU and not a CPU is because it does have integrated graphics, but it's Vega architecture, not RDNA 2. Aside from that, the Steam Deck has LPDDR memory, no dedicated graphics chip, a weird aspect ratio, and a minimal I.O. of a USB Type-C, headphone jack, and micro SD card reader. Luckily for us, there will be a Steam Dock with expanded I.O. for doing something similar to what I plan on doing today. Although, a Type-C dongle should be capable of doing all the same things. Now, let's get into how I plan on setting all this up. First off, and probably the most controversial, is going to be cutting a hole in the back, right over where the M.2 slot is for the SSD, exactly as I have it here on my laptop. I do, however, plan on 3D printing a cover for my Steam Deck for when I'm using it on the go, which is probably never considering I don't go outside. In Valve's teardown of the Steam Deck, you can see the SSD in a little slot down on the lower left or uh, right hand side and luckily for us it doesn't appear to be obstructed by the dock so you'll probably be able to stand it up on the dock while you're doing it and i forgot to mention this before while i was filming but there is another metal shield under the cover that you will also have to cut a hole through so once we have a hole cut in the back of our steam deck we'll go ahead and remove our ssd replacing it with a m.2 to pci express 16x adapter which we'll have to cut down in order to fit the Steam Deck's 2230 M.2 form factor. It's just shorter, that's all. Then I go ahead and connect the PCI Express 16 side of the adapter to a vertical mount. Now, it's not necessary, but it makes it a lot cleaner than just having your GPU sitting on the table while you use it. At this point, we can go ahead and attach our GPU to the vertical mounting fixture like so. For this, we're going to be using a Radeon RX 6900 XT because of how the AMD graphics are built directly into the Linux kernel. There shouldn't be too much fiddling with it to get it to work with a Steam Deck. You could use an NVIDIA GPU for this, although it would require installing proprietary drivers, and then I'm sure I'll get roasted in the comments for even saying this. AMD cards just play nicer on Linux. Now for all of this, you will need an external power supply to give our GPU power and our PCI 16X adapter power. So for this, I'm using a Corsair CX750M power supply. It's the same power supply that we use for LN2 overclocking. All we need to do with it is plug in our PCI Express power connectors. So that's our 8X, our twin 8X power connectors into our GPU. Plug in our 16X adapter to a SATA connector. And then we have to jumper our power to tell it to turn on all the time. Luckily for us, we have a Gamers Nexus mod mat here, and it shows our PS on here and our ground here. So if we face the connector like this, it should be the fourth pin over with the one directly next to it. I'm just using a wire here to give the turn on signal a ground, but you can get adapters for this to do it much more cleanly, and they're actually meant for powering on water loops to check for leaks and whatnot. But you can get them off of Amazon for like $10. This isn't gonna hurt anything, it's just kind of ugly. And of course, we'll go ahead and plug in our power supply, but we won't actually flick it on yet. So now the GPU is connected and all ready to go. But because we removed our SSD to connect our GPU, we have to substitute our SSD with a external SSD. So we have a Samsung T7 here. It's great for booting off of. I haven't managed to boot uh, Linux off of one of these adapters. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. I haven't put enough time and effort into it to figure out how to do it, but I'm sure when the time comes, we'll figure out a way of booting off of the Steam Deck's SSD in an enclosure like this. I just, this was quite the bear to get set up. I didn't want to go in through another hoop to try to figure out how to make that work. For now, the Samsung T7 works great. So we're going to go ahead and flip this all over and plug it in. We're just going to use a pair of fans here to, uh, 
step up so we're not putting too much pressure on our PCIe slot. And then plug our Samsung T7 into the fastest USB Type-C port that we have. That'll make this a lot more usable. <laughs> and plug in the laptop, I mean, <clears throat> Steam Deck, to make sure it's getting full power in docked mode. Go ahead and connect a mouse and keyboard to the Steam Dock because we're not gonna have much uh, handheld action anymore with all this nonsense attached to it. Of course, this is a laptop, so I don't necessarily have to connect a keyboard to it, but I do have a spare keyboard here in case I need it. At this point, we'll go ahead and flick on our power supply and then turn on our laptop. I mean, Steam Deck. <laughs> For this, we're using an Arch-based Manjaro Linux because it is close enough to SteamOS 3.0 that even Valve recommends it to its developers. Right away, it boots in just fine. It automatically recognizes our external GPU and even knows that it's connected to a capture card. It even lets me turn on the laptop display, although you can't see the laptop display because of how I have it set up, but it knows the laptop display is there. I don't use the laptop display, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back off. It just gets things more confusing. Come on, bud. Come on, come on, Linux. You can do it, bud. <laughs> keep, the, keep this configuration. And we can even boot into some games. So let's boot up some games. Steam launches just fine like it would on any other computer. And hopefully when we're playing off of a Steam Deck, we can still use the micro SD card that is probably installed in your Steam Deck to store more games. Currently though, launching games off external storage on Linux is kind of iffy, so we're not going to try that. After all, we have plenty of space here on our Samsung T7. So let's just go ahead and launch some Cyberpunk. Now I should note that we are running uh, Proton Experimental. Uh, some games like Proton 6.3-8, some games like Proton 5.13, some, it's mostly just testing to see which games run better on which, and which ones don't even run at all on the others, but we're just using Proton Experimental for this today. Yes, you can download some experimental Proton, some like weird fork ones like GE, but we're just using what comes straight out of the box with Manjaro and most of these games play just fine. Man, you can really hear that coil line open up. <laughs> Speaking of coil line, get subscribed. The audio controls still work on the laptop's keyboard, so hopefully the audio controls still work on the Steam Deck, and you can play with a monitor that doesn't have speakers, and your Steam Deck will output the audio for you. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the audio just because I know I'll get copyright struck for like some random reason. In our settings, we're playing at 1080p. Our graphics are set to low, but doesn't really mind getting set to high or ultra. I think we have a frame rate cap as far as bandwidth through our M.2 where upping the detail doesn't specifically lower our frame rates. Although you can hear the laptop really starting to spin up. But doing something like this gives huge boost to frame rates. Like the Steam Deck out of the box is only playing at like 800p where this is 1080p and probably go higher, it most likely can go higher, but the monitor I have it hooked up to is just 1080p. Well yes, supposedly the Steam Deck could output 4K. Don't think you want to be playing games at 4K on its built-in APU. But something like this is definitely feasible. As we tested in some of our theoretical videos, the Steam Deck will definitely be bottlenecked by its integrated graphics, so adding the external GPU like this will be a game changer in docked operation if you plan on you know, staying in for the weekend or perhaps even playing some VR. What's really crazy about this is just how far Linux has come, gaming on Linux has come, to where we can play a Microsoft game like Forza Horizon 5 on a Linux laptop with an external SSD with a external GPU <laughs> and we're getting playable frame rates of over 100 FPS. Now, I think my settings aren't really set that high, but it's just so impressive to me how far all of this has come. I should say none of this was exactly plug and play. There was a bit of fiddling that had to be done to get this GPU to work with this laptop in this configuration. All of that 
fairly mini minimal. I'm not an expert at Linux by any means, but just some quick Google searches got me all of this working. And that's really it. It looks complicated, but it's really not. You're basically just moving your SSD to a USB and then putting our graphics card in its place. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Maybe it even encouraged you to buy a Steam Deck. I know I really look forward to all the content I have planned for it. Like always guys, leave a comment on what you have planned for your Steam Deck. And again, leave a like, get subscribed, and I'll see you next time.